Hi, and welcome to another edition of Jim on the Air. I'm Jim Sirianni, your host, your host with the most. I'm contractually obligated to say that every single time I have to run that joke into the ground because I just have not come up with a better joke to introduce the show. But um, I'm Jim Sirianni, your host. Thank you so much for either listening or viewing the show, Jim on the Air. Really appreciate it. Um, this time around, the show, Jim on the Air, is uh, dedicating a lot of our time to the Reemerge Dance Festival, which is coming up here pretty quick. And in fact, I think it's a week from today. Um, but it's June 17th through the 20th at Center Stage Theater, the Reemerge Dance Festival, Janu June 17th through the 20th. Did I say January? I hope I didn't. Anyway, June 17th through the 20th at Center Stage. And uh, for ticket information and to reserve tickets, you can go to the Center Stage website centerstagetheater.org that's centerstagetheater.org and you can get your tickets through the website you can also click on the blog tab and that will give you all the in-depth information about the festival all the various performers studios that are performing and uh, all their information is found there on the blog and that's also on the center stage website centerstagetheater.org and uh, my guests this time around are Robin Bicio and Keita Mrazik. And uh, the two of them have made a, a dance film, and we're going to learn more about it. And the, the two films will be shown um, on opening night of the festival, which will be June 17th, Thursday, June 17th at 7 p.m. And their two films are called A Vanished Day and The Errant Sea. And we're going to learn all about uh, those two films. And ladies, welcome to Jim on the Air. It's so great to have you both with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, so, uh, Robin, I'll start with you. Tell me a little bit about your path um, as an artist. How, um, wh where did it begin and where is it now? <laughs> um, well, I used to do mostly stage work and site work, and then I've been doing films for quite a while. And Kate has been in a lot of all of that and just decided to do some iPhone films during the pandemic. And um, Kate came along as the dancer and then became co-producer, co-director, co-everything. We just decided to do these iPhone films together. Nice. So, and and Kata has a background in film studies in college too. So she was right there. So we just, um, yeah, just started doing so, everything together. Nice. And Kata, tell me a little bit about your background as an artist. How did, um, what's your path been? Yeah. Um, w way back, I started out in gymnastics when I was tiny and then moved into dance at a later age, but ended up studying it uh, I got a degree in dance and psychology in college, and then and that was in Wisconsin, a very different culture, and then moved out to Santa Barbara and got sort of immersed in the California flavor <laughs> of movement and expression. And, you know, I've danced with some companies locally in Santa Barbara, Nebula Dance Lab for a number of years. Um, but have been collaborating with Robin, also Marco Pinter and Tim Wood. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, but, and Wesley Chang. So lots of great local artists, I think, helped to um, help me redefine myself as an artist in this, in this uh, ecosystem. And Robin and I, I'd say, have been collaborating for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something really special that we've discovered together in our work where, um, we slow down a little bit more and we we are trying to listen to the the nature around us. I think nature speaks really loudly to a lot of folks in Santa Barbara and we listen and we want to work with that and bring that into the elements of our creations. And so I think that's my, my path has gone a lot more down this road of slowing down, um, having more curiosity, um, and, and working with nature. Sometimes I describe Robin's work as like the Pline Air <laughs> dance. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> nice, nice. And um, uh, for both of you, uh, I'll start with you, Robin. What is um, your favorite uh, uh, type of filmmaking that you 
that you enjoy either creating yourself or viewing um, as as an audience member? What what if you had to pick one? What 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 type of uh, genre would you pick in film? Well, I like to watch a lot of movies and read a lot of books, but on this path that I'm on, like really integrating dance into landscape, I really like to see other people that do what, what we do and a kind of purity of the message and also of the language and also to see if it really works. Like nature is not like a stage where you would just do anything that you would do inside in a theater. It has a special calling that wants to be heard. So do you listen? And then how do you bring the dancer and the audience into that? And um, so I'm interested in, in this field and I think it's uh, important and I think it's not that easy to attain. So I'm always looking. So that's, that's what I'm interested in too. But meanwhile, I like movies just like everybody else. Nice. <laughs> so. Nice, very cool. And then Kita, how about for you? Um, what, what draws you, what type of uh, dance genres or styles or traditions are you mostly drawn towards? Oh gosh. <laughs> if you had to pick just one. <laughs> I know, it's interesting. I've gotten pickier in a different way as I grow up, <laughs> but um, I don't know if it's necessarily a genre. I, I think what I'm looking for is the performer's ability to meet the audience in some way. That's that's when I come away from a show feeling satisfied. It's when I felt that there is some thought and intention around how the interaction is going to play out, which is sometimes having a very strong fourth wall and, and choosing to pretend the audience doesn't exist or trying to break that fourth wall. You know, there's, there's lots of ways that a performer is going to communicate with the audience member, but what, what is satisfying for me is usually getting a sense that there's been some thought around how that connection But one artist that usually stands out to me a lot is the is a well the Botsheva Dance Company. I think Oha does an amazing job both getting movement as fully and presently as they can. They're also like so mm -hmm. incredible and articulate in their movement. But there's there's an there's a relationship to the audience that matters in that moment that that makes the dance really powerful for me. And a relationship to themselves as they dance. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. Yeah. If I may digress for a moment, I think we had some of these questions when we were creating the films that we're going to be showing. Right. Because film, you're not meeting the audience member in real time. So how do you how do you still cultivate that relationship? And and for one, it was we would do so many iterations of movement and we'd have to get out to the beach and start performing it again. And Robin and I would both be like, oop, that wasn't right. We have to do it again. Like it, it wasn't about how I executed the movements. It was more about the feeling that we had in the place that we were in. Mm -hmm. How could I really be clear about myself in that place, which then allows me to show up more fully to meet the, the space and hopefully than the audience member when they have an opportunity to share it with us. Right, right. Now I understand um, the the two films, The Vanished Day and The Errant Sea, uh, you shot them both during the pandemic, is that correct? Yes, we did. And we rehearsed on the front porch here and in the in Shoreline Park and had we were had a different trajectory of for last year what we were going to be working on, but we we couldn't really do it. We didn't have our regular film crews. We couldn't rehearse, um, so it became very plein air. Like, what can we do? And the beach was just across the street. Plenty of fresh air, sunshine, and the solace basically. And it just kind of called out. Um, and it because I walked there every day, just like seeing all the rocks and everything became even more familiar and what I wanted to do was was think about different mythologies that come out of the beach um, for a vanished day um, like 
Minoan dance or, or what does that mean? Like why are octopus in so much Minoan art, like in the mosaics? What do octopus say? Or what, what does, um, what are cranes, why cranes in Minoan art? And, and just kind of fitting that into the beach here. And um, for an errant sea, I've had a wooden tutu forever. And it just seemed like it spoke to the tide pools. So I don't even think we rehearsed for that. I think we just went over there and did it. <laughs> so wow. yeah, just kind of time to really think about the beach and even kind of cultural connotations of it. In addition to really seeing how beautiful it is and how various the uh, beach across the street is. It's just not a flat sand um, with a horizon. There's all these cliffs um, and it's just very um, dramatic. So nice. Very yeah, so cool. that's, that was really fun to have a project. And um, I was really proud because I shot it myself. I never uh -huh. shoot anything myself, right? Uh -huh. um, and it's like, it just reminds me of what Arna, who I've worked with, were like, keep the camera straight, like, keep the horizon line straight. So, and so. I was inordinately proud that it was just the two of us that did everything and Kata edited everything. And yeah, we just very cool. We have more people working with us, basically. Mm -hmm. I so. must say it was interesting with the footage, um, shooting it on our phones. We got that immediate feedback about how it looked. So I remember there was a moment in A Vanished Day um, there was this beautiful, huge rock face and I was like wedged into it and we must have spent 20 minutes there trying to get just the right moment. Like it's it, one undulating move and a couple movements of the arms, but it was like that angle's not right, that's not right. And we could, because we had our phones and it was just the two of us, we could keep going back and like refining it in the moment, which isn't always the way that I like to work. You know, when we have these bigger pieces, sometimes we have to set the footage aside and let the memory settle and then come back. And well, we don't editing. even see the footage. Yeah, you forget usually, about it. Usually the cinematographer's over here and I'm making sure the dancers don't get yeah. hurt or whispering like what to do and the dancers trying to like work outside, it's difficult. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes we see the footage, sometimes not. They're like, oh, what, is this okay? And we're like, yeah, but you don't, you don't micromanage it. Right. And like, no, that is the feeling of an octopus coming out of like, Kata got it. So we got this angle and we're like, yes, that's it. We can actually do that. Yeah. Um, so it's just small things that mean a lot in your memory of making something, whether people yeah. get it or not. It's like, it's a happy day when we shoot and it's a happy day when we edit, you know, it's happy for us. Yeah. And oh, that's I good. remember everything about the days that we do that. Mm. And when you're creating, it should be happy. It, it should be something that, you know, at the end of the day you have, you've created something, so it should be happy. And, it, and it's good that it is. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask, and, and you've kind of touched on it here, um, but what challenges were there with using the iPhone versus using other cameras? Or did you have moments when you're like, oh my gosh, it's so much easier with the iPhone. Did you have moments like that where using an iPhone versus other camera equipment um, was either challenging or not for you? Well, I don't use other phone. I don't shoot anything myself. Okay. I work with pretty amazing Nick Blaskovich, Ethan um, Turpin, work with amazing cinematographers. So I, they, they have their equipment and all their bags of tricks. Nick especially has, well, they all do. They, yeah. So I didn't try to do that. And we were, yeah. So I, I don't know. I kind of went and practiced ahead of time and I like shot the landscape and we put, we put it through some apps to make it look more filmy and the apps are like 30 second hits. So it was pretty easy for, for um, Kata to edit because it was just like, boom, boom, boom. So that was easier to do. And, mm -hmm. and Kata, you didn't have a fancy edit system either. You edited it on your, I used right? the iMovie to edit yeah, it. So, um, yeah, so Simple. we were really much more low tech, but I, feel like, I, I felt because I got to shoot it myself and it was very manageable and light. Yeah, that I could, it's like, I was almost speaking to the landscape itself, like, 
okay, I'm going to shoot my favorite part of the beach. I don't have to like talk anyone into it, like stand here with the camera or, or, you know, it's like, I'm just, it was very intuitive um, um, mm. and fast and light. Mm -hmm. And um, it just looks so beautiful. It's like so shocking that you could get something on your phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it was That's just amazing. Like, the it, technology. It like, oh, God, we got it. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it, it felt good. I, we're going to see how they look blown up at the center stage because I don't know, you know, I don't really know how much they read big because if they're not done with HD or anything. So that could be a limitation that something that works on your phone as a viewing scene on a big screen, it may or may not um, wor work that well. So it'll be interesting to, ch to check it out. It also right. makes me curious though, like these these films were made at a time where people couldn't go and look on a big screen as easily. Most of the but, material yeah. we were consuming was coming from smaller devices anyway. And now that we're talking about it, I almost like imagine that these films in their ideal way of showing would be in a much smaller yeah. viewing. You know, like what if you look into a view box to watch this movie mm -hmm. instead of way big blown out on the big screen and so we can start to play with the kind of like environment that we want to create again around the film that we've created it's expansive and epic inside of that world because that beach the nature yeah. is just so stunning but then to take all of that expansive beauty and make it a tiny focus i think that i'd be really intrigued yeah. to well, read we, we had talked about that if we do an installation for some of the films that were shot on hd at the beach to like um project these in a seashell or something so they become very jewel-like and kind of reminiscent of a really special time that was very internal for most of us mm -hmm. yeah and we also had to stay kind of apart like mm -hmm. we i had a mask on you you had your mask and took it off i mean it 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 has a lot of um momentous feelings that i don't know if things shot after this will have and most dancers we knew th across the country all started doing this everybody filmed everything with their iphone mm -hmm. in their house in their this so there's there is a lot of stuff that's going to come out of this era um but a lot of dance people i don't know if they know how to look at the environment as much as maybe we do if because that's what we do yeah you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. it's not, it's not that easy to transition how and where you shoot something mm -hmm. or why yeah. right I mean, because you need to do it that way i mean i think probably people learned a lot and some people will be happy that A lot of dance people just love the stage, right? That's <laughs> what it's just special did. out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. Excellent. Well, um, uh, by the way, I'm, you know, in case you forgot, those of you who are watching or listening, I'm, I'm speaking with Robin BCO and Keita Mrazik, and we're talking about their dance films, which will be featured at the uh, uh, Reemerge Dance Festival. And uh, their films are called A Vanished Day and the Errant Sea, and they will be part of the opening night, which is Thursday, June 17th, 7 p.m., and you can get tickets at centerstagetheater.org. Again, that's centerstagetheater.org. Um, so, ladies, let me ask you, uh, what are you hoping the audience will take away from once they've seen your films? What are you hoping that they will stick with them, if you will, once they leave the theater? What do you think? Oh, gosh. Um... For me, I oh, how do I articulate it? I actually I don't know if I have a strong hope. I hope that they get what they need from watching the film, <laughs> whatever that may be. Um, maybe maybe there's something for me around like a settling in and an appreciation for. I want to just say beauty. It's kind of a general term. I don't want it to be overused, but but I think that beauty and the pursuit and appreciation of beauty is a big driving factor in the work that Robin and I do together. We're looking for that beauty and it doesn't have to be conventional. It's like just really being able to appreciate the beauty that is surrounding us all the time and taking that opportunity to 
like rest with it and settle with it and recognize that there there's not much more that needs to be done to let it in in fact less less done to let it in um, and I feel like the both films to me have it, and especially in the way that I that we edited them Spanish day in particular I think there's like a it feels meditative it feels reflective um, for me and it feels kind of like like a rest <laughs> from mm -hmm. all the inputs you know so resting in the beauty <laughs> oh nice I, I like that resting in the beauty i like that a lot yeah that's yeah i don't usually have any intent for the audience yeah. but i will say um filming these and posting things on social media like snippets of what we shot and i just felt like we're lucky that we could actually get outside and weren't stuck inside and Santa Barbara is so beautiful that I felt like a mission just to share nature itself. And then with dance and nature, like, yes, this is our home and this is our relationship. And I did kind of feel like a missionary about it. Mm -hmm. Like every time I went out like to go shoot nature or working with you, it, it was like, this is an important pursuit. And, and people did say, oh, I really like looking at your your photos on Instagram or Facebook. And usually you're just like, oh, well, okay. But I just like, oh, I'm so glad because they're like, a lot of them couldn't get out. Yeah. So to see the edifying nature is just, it, it's so deeply our home. We just so deeply need to care for it and also realize that we're part of it. And it gives so much solace that I'm glad, I hope that our films do portray that that and encourage people just to, to go out and just sit at the beach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? really, just, exactly. Just, like we live here. How many people in Santa Barbara actually just go sit there? And oh yeah. So you, you know, like you like look at it, but maybe just breathe at the beach or something like Mm -hmm. we're lucky we live here of all the places we could live this is where we live so and the mountains right so and the, yeah i don't know if we all need to be like channels for the beauty here but i like being a channel for the beauty here <laughs> nice very cool uh well ladies we um we just have a few more minutes left before the end of the show but i hope you'll indulge me i wanted to ask you some random questions um <laughs> just to kind of get to know you on a on a different level as well um do you mind if i put you on the spot for us for a couple of questions <laughs> no, no no you can start with me though start. right it sounds nervous okay so, yeah. that's me. fine See and, how uh, the questions are <laughs> well then kate i'll start i'll start with you then um uh what is your favorite comfort food oh man mm. oh gosh that's a good question i don't I don't know. What do I love? What is my comfort food? Uh, something warm. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I think a lot of people it's, it's like something hot or warm, like a soup or something, or or yeah. you know mac and cheese or. <laughs> I was thinking mac and cheese because I have a daughter and and we have a but I think I OD'd on mac and cheese now because she it's like one of the only things she'll eat right. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, probably some kind of carbohydrate that is warm, warm pasta, maybe some good. Yeah. Pasta. Yeah. Yeah. yeah warm I pasta. probably know my answer. Okay. What's okay. Yours? Robin, what is, what is yours? Watermelon juice. Really? I'm sorry. What was that again? Watermelon juice. Watermelon juice. Oh, you know, I love, do, do, have you gotten the watermelon juice at um, Trader Joe's? No, I didn't know they had it there. Yeah. They have it like, yeah, they have it bottled up. <laughs> I just love it. I, yeah. I like live for it and it's not it's not yeah everyone kind of makes fun of me i'm like did you get the watermelon juice <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> okay well maybe we got other groceries that's good to yeah. know yeah that's really cool to know yeah i i like watermelon juice it's really it's very refreshing <laughs> it's so refreshing and so re it seems so summer and mm -hmm. yeah just, very much so i just i just do it's not it's calming yeah anyway i'm that's why. That. Yeah. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, another random question I have is uh, what is your favorite fictional character, whether it be literature or movies or TV? Um, what's your favorite uh, fictional character? 
Do you have anything mm. to think about that? It could be like maybe from a movie, like a franchise like Star Wars or um, uh, Lord of the Rings or um, or maybe Harry Potter or maybe, um, you know, Shakespeare <laughs> to go from one <laughs> extreme to the other. That's a good question. I don't know if I have a fictional character I love. Um, I, I, you know, almost a composite of the Edith Wharton characters and how kind of composed they were, but finding a real life in a conventional setting. They, um, I just read those books like candy when I was in college and I can't, I read them so fast probably. I can't, I can't remember each character, but somehow, somehow the kind of search for meaning in a way that's where meaning is hard to find necessarily. Um, I like that in a character. Nice. Very cool. And then uh, one more question, and then um, I'll, I'll let you go. <laughs> um, what is your most prized possession or your most treasured uh, possession, if you had to pick just one? And it could be, you know, material, or it could be um, a person. What's your most prized possession? It can be a person? Sure. Oh, okay. My We're daughter. both going to pick our daughters. Yeah. Good. Uh, <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. Every day, past generations. Yes. yes. We each have one daughter, which is kind of special. Mm -hmm. Oh, and wow. Spent, and they've spent some time, quite a bit of time together, really. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and my daughter loves little Ruby. And um, Robin, how, how old is your daughter? 30. And then, um, Kata, your daughter is? Five. five. Oh, five. Oh, that's such a great yeah. age. <laughs> we just had a play date last week. Yeah, so I would say if I could have another prized thing, I think that their play date brought this out for me, which is just like, curiosity is so much of a prized <laughs> element to me and when no. Allie came over I had saved all sorts of random stuff like you know toilet paper rolls from the entire year um didn't know what to do with them and all of these raw materials and I was like here you go ladies what are you gonna do if you need a hammer and nails hammer stuff up on the walls like whatever like let's change the let's change the house and then wow. they, to, uh, they just created oh i didn't know what they did yeah. yeah it was there there were many levels like i i left so that they could have their freedom because i know I, you know i'm one of the mothers so mm -hmm. it will affect my daughter to have me there so i was like i'm just gonna step back i'll come back in a little while and then they, they could what check. did they what did they do with the the paper towel rolls <laughs> they, made, they ended up making the equivalent of like a gigantic macaroni necklace wow oh, they, they that's cool toothpicks and they like poked it through all around and then they hung things off of the oh that's cute it's hanging like on our big sliding glass door now it's this uh -huh. huge i don't i don't understand it but i do appreciate it and the process that, that is really cool that's and very I, cool for me, I would say there are two places that are man-made. One is my studio, which I'm so lucky to have. It's it's really beautiful to have a place you can just go sit and create and people can come to and feel mm -hmm. in a space that's like time out of time. And the other is Los Banos swimming pool. <laughs> I'm addicted oh. to swimming. And I'm definitely a swimmer. And oh, that's cool. Every day, are you gonna went, Are you gonna? And then I swim in the ocean in the summer, but I actually have to wait till July. I, it has to be like sixty-five. Yeah. But between the studio and the pool, my light kind of goes back and forth between. Them. Between the two. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. Power spots. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I I liked it a lot. That's well. Those are great answers. Thank you so much for letting me uh, poke around a little bit there. And, um, but so uh, we're just about out of time, but before we go, um, is there any uh, 411 that the two of you want to put out any information on websites or social media information, all that good stuff. Um, go ahead and, and uh, just uh, give a shout out to all those. Uh, uh, Plug all of our things. Yeah. yeah. You go exactly. ahead. Yeah. yeah. So follow at Robin BCO films. If you want to catch the behind the scenes rehearsal footage and stories and mm -hmm. things in process, she's very, 
She's very open about the whole process. So we're going to rehearse after this for another thing. And you'll probably see footage from that. You'll see it if you go to Robin VCO Films on Instagram. And then my personal account is at Kata Morozik. And I don't know if you'll put the spelling up somewhere in show notes, K-A-I-T-A-M-R-A-Z-E-K. -A -A -E uh, is there anything else I want to plug? Um, I'm just going to go for it. I also have two companies. Um, one is an activewear brand, and it's called at Ghostflower Active. So you can find that on Instagram or ghostflower.com. We put the energy channels from Chinese medicine onto the clothing as well as acupressure points. So you can learn how to work with your energy network while you're wearing cool workout clothes. And oh, wow, that's very cool. I like that idea. Oh, you can interview me for that another day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might have to be another show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. And then I have a company with my husband called Empirical Wisdom. And that's a retreat geared for college students. It's mindfulness. He's a neuroscientist and um, he specializes in mindfulness and meditation practices. I'm a movement specialist. And then there's a third partner with us, uh, my sister-in-law, who is also a PhD in neuroscience. And so we are doing evidence-based six-week retreats for college students. It's like the equivalent of a semester abroad. And in 2022, we'll be going to Costa Rica so if you know of anybody who's interested in that or who has a child who's coming into college and could use a little extra mm -hmm. time to get themselves in alignment in a formative period of time, then empirical wisdom might be worth checking out. Nice. Very cool. Wow. That's, uh, that's great. I like, I like the idea of that. That's wonderful. And um, well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. And, uh, but before we go, I'll just remind everyone that uh, your films a Vanished Day and the Errant Sea will be uh, shown on the opening night of the Reemerge Dance Festival. And that's Thursday, June 17th at 7 p.m. at Center Stage Theater. And for tickets and information, you can log on to centerstagetheater.org. Again, that's centerstagetheater.org. And also click on the blog tab and you can check out their blog and see all the other artists that will be um, uh, presenting at the festival this year. You can check out all the in-depth information on the blog. And again, that's centerstagetheater.org. And if you want to know what I'm up to, you can follow me all over the place at Jim on the Air on social media, Jim on the Air at, on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And uh, the podcast, of course, is also called Jim on the Air, and it's available on uh, anchor.fm, Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and many more. And um, and be sure to uh, check it out. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today and continued success with uh, films and dancing and everything. And and I'll, I'll, I've been saying this every time, don't break a leg because, <laughs> you know, maybe that might, might not be good for dancers. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this for Center Stage too. Yes. We really oh. are glad that that theater survive, is surviving this. Yeah, exactly. I hope that uh, Center Stage... <laughs> They really care about the artists in town and we care they about them. yeah it's very yeah. special it so. is it's a it's a great thank you, center great. stage yes yeah. and thank you center stage for you know <laughs> staying in there and and you know fighting the good fight if you will during the pandemic yeah. we really appreciate it so much yes and everybody thank you so much for either watching or listening and we will catch you next time bye bye everybody <laughs>